Um, so tonight, uh, Mr. Rochester watched quite a bit of this with me, so he has opinions. Um, tonight I watched um, Massey Tajadin's Last Night. She also wrote The Jacket, uh, which came out when I was in college, um, and a handful of other things. And then this is her directorial debut, and so far I think the only feature she's directed. And it stars um, Kiara Knightley, Sam Worthington, Eva Mendez, and Guillaume Canet. And has like a brief moment of Griffin Dunn. I love Griffin Dunn, so that was really fun. Um, I really hate Sam Worthington. He's terrible. Um, I think he's a terrible actor. And he's kind of terrible in this. He's always terrible. He has like... Um, I, I always like to say, I've said this for years now, that he has the screen presence of a mop. But as someone pointed out on Twitter, and I feel the same way, at least mops are useful, you know? Sorry, Sam Worthington, but not really sorry. Kira Knightley, I always am fascinated with because she is like a year older than me, or like nine months older than me, something like that. But she seems to always play like... She's every character she's ever played played practically has been like twenty eight. She's been playing twenty eight for the last eight years, and she's just now twenty eight. You know, it's hilarious. Um, because like in this movie, she's supposed to have met in college and been married for a while, um, and yet she filmed this in two thousand and eight when she was twenty three. <laughs> so, you know. Anyways, Karen Knightley, I love her. This movie made me cry a lot. Like, I, I've cleaned up my face a little bit. Uh, basically, last month, remember I watched that other Kara Knightley one directed by a woman and I cried, so clearly I need to not watch Kara Knightley movies because she makes movies that make me cry. Um, the, I guess this movie got mi really mixed reviews, which I'm like, what is wrong with you people? Um... It, it it's really compelling and really an interesting look. So it's about Kara Knightley and Sam Worthington who have been married for a while and they go to a work party for Sam Worthington's uh, office and she notices that he is attracted to Eva Mendez's character and sort of picks a fight about it when they get home and then he has to go on a work trip and she's just like, ugh. And, but then when she goes out to get coffee, boom, Gim Kane shows up and he was... Um, her old lover from when her and her current husband were not married yet, but they'd broken up for a little bit. And so then she was in Paris and she met this guy and dated him and then, uh, left and came back and got married to the mop. And it's just like, how, going through the whole thing, how <laughs> is it even a choice between Sam Worthington and Guillaume Canet? Like, there's no choice there. Whoever chooses, there's something wrong with her if she's choosing Sam Worthington. Anyways, so the rest of the movie is the night, the next night, where um, it traces Sam Worthington on the business trip with Eva Mendez and their flirtation, and then Guillaume Canet and Kara Knightley sort of reconnecting. And what's interesting about it, for me anyways, was that in all intents and purposes, both sides of them were having an affair. But on the Sam Worthington and Eva Mendez side, it was a purely physical attraction sort of uh, let's have sex affair, right? And with Kara Knightley and Guillaume Canet, it was very emotional and, and intellectual kind of connection. And it's like what kind of cheating is more hurtful? I don't know. Um, Sam Worthington has, like, no screen presence, so there was no chemistry with Eva Mendes, and she tried. Like, she was really interesting. She's, she's an interesting screen presence. But that made their section of the film, like, not really work, because, like, he's terrible. Um, but the, the, uh, Guillaume Canet, Kiara Knightley side, like, one, this was one of the best performances, like, she's ever done. She's so good in it. Two, they had insane chemistry like she has no chemistry with Sam Worthington why is she married to this guy I don't know um so towards the end it gets very you know emotional as as sun is coming up and they're gonna have to separate and, and that's you know a lot of tears happened um Griffin Dunn also very good he got to be like a rich 
intellectual sort of guy who asks too many questions. And I love him, so um, I actually met him once. He's really nice. Um, yeah, this movie really made me cry. I... It had a score by Clint Manzel, who did, like, Black Swan. He does the Aronofsky movies. Um, I don't know. I just I just thought it was a, an interesting... Um, the, the relationship... The most interesting part about the film is the Keira Knightley, Guillaume Kenne half. And um, what I find fascinating about it is is the way she talks about how they're, they still have all this passion because they never, um, got tired of each other. Um, and then at one point the Griffin Dunn character talks about how he bets that Guillaume Kenne and Kara Knightley have, only, have spent less than a hundred days together. And it's like, but it, physically together, you know, but they've known each other for so many years. And it's like, just because they haven't like, it, it posits the question, like, would their passion for each other fade if they spent day in, day out together? Or is it the only reason it sparks like this so much um, when they meet because, is because there's so much space in between when they see each other. And all they have in their brain is the memory of, of what they had and, and and not really anything tangible. I don't know. That, that sort of – those thoughts – really resonate with me for, for various personal reasons. So, um, this film really worked for me. It really like hit some, some, it hit hard in some places where I was just like, no, I don't want to feel this right now. Oh God. Like I knew it was going to be a drama going in and I was like, I was prepared, but I was not prepared. I was not prepared. Um, yeah, I love this movie. Uh, it's on Netflix. Um, it's, depending on if you're in England or if you're in the United States. It's a 2010-2011 film. Um, uh, where was I going with that? I have no idea. I'm, I just want to curl on a ball and cry. Um, oh, it's beautifully shot. Who is the, who is the cinematographer? Um, Peter Deming, who... Uh, what else is he? Oh, he shot he shot um, my cousin Vinny in Evil Dead 2 and Mulholland Drive. Okay, well, that's why it was so beautiful. Like, there you go. Um, and Drop Dead Fred. <laughs> what an amazing filmography this guy has. Wow. And then it was cut by Susan Morse, who has, who did, no wonder I cried. God damn. Damn it, she, she's the editor from um, Hannah and Her Sisters, which ha, ha, it makes me, that movie, talk about movies that make me cry. Um, she apparently cut all of Woody Allen's films from 97, or from 77 to 98. Interesting. This was a great film last night. Like, just, is so good. Um... Apparently she's going to do some editing on Louis C.K.'s third season of Louis. Interesting. So, this is a really good movie. If you're like me, you'll probably cry. Uh, it's on Netflix. It's from 2011. It's written and directed by Massey Tajaden. I want her to make more movies because I like to cry. I'm, you know. I like movies that make me cry. I mean, I, what can I say? Um, this is this is wonderful. Again, it's on Netflix. You should watch it and cry, and then like tweet at me and be like, "I'm crying because of you," and then I'll be like, "Okay, good," because I felt those feels. 